Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra and today I've got some summer decor projects for you. Enjoy! Now I'm going to go ahead and glue some of the corks together to make a base and then the next layer will be tumbling tower blocks. I'm putting the hot glue on the side of the tumbling tower blocks so they stand up a little taller and then they end up being about the same height as the corks. I'm going to start with another row of corks, then one more row of the blocks, and then I'm going to finish it off with another row of corks. I'm also using my miter shears to cut the corks. This is like butter. It's so easy to cut little pieces of cork. I decided to use this Verithane gel stain in the color Dark Walnut. It's my absolute favorite. I decided to apply it with a paintbrush. I did have to shake the bottle a couple of times throughout the use, but I really love how the stain turned out. You can still see the lettering through the corks. You can see a little bit of the wood grain on the wood blocks. And I think it was a really good choice to stain it instead of paint it. I've got it sitting on a piece of cardboard and I'm just going to trace out the interior shape because I'm going to make up my own custom little cardboard box. I want to be able to leave the bottom open so if I want to put this on top of a different plant down the road I can do that. I wanted it to be fairly versatile. So what I'm doing now is just cutting out the square and I'm not going all the way through even though I am using my craft knife. I just kind of want to score it so I can bend it easier to hot glue it. Then I'll be cutting out the corners and that will make a really simple box. I'm just going to glue it together with some hot glue. I am totally in love with these Sola wood flowers. I'm going to take a bamboo skewer and I'm going to give each of them a stem. It's really easy just to poke that skewer down into the center of the flower and you've got a perfect stem for it. You can also then cut the bamboo skewer down to whatever size you need. I'm going to be using just an assortment of different florals and I'm going to just make myself a small little arrangement. Okay, so I've created my box and now I'm I need to add some floral foam to it and check out this cool little cutter that I have. You got it. It's the straight edge from the Dollar Tree. It is a perfect floral foam cutting tool. It doesn't make a mess and it cuts through everything really, really nicely. I've pushed my box through and now I'm just taking my fingers underneath it and giving it a little bit more of a push to elevate it a little bit more. I don't want to have to do so much filler so being able to just push that box up and down the way I want it is perfect. I'm going to start arranging my Sola wood flowers. I'll start with the two largest flowers. I'm also going to make them the tallest. And then I'm just going to start grouping the flowers a little bit farther down each time, working my way around and creating a nice mound of flowers. I've also got some of these greenery picks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut off those little fern like branches and add them into the arrangement. I've got one of the little green spiky ones way up at the top and then I'm just going to keep adding them in until I like the look of it. I don't want too much green but I just love this soft green color. It works so well with the wood flowers. I just love how this project turned out. The combination of the delicate Sola wood flowers with the rustic cork and wood bottom just looks absolutely gorgeous. I hope you love it as much as I do. This project is probably my favorite out of all of them that I'm doing today. I'm starting off with a piece of linen, sort of like drop cloth fabric, and I've cut out a piece of cardstock in the same shape. I'm going to be making a cone, but this shape is a little too rounded at one end. It should have had a little bit more angles to it, so I'm going to end up having to trim some of it. So gluing the edges 
in like I'm doing now is kind of not worth it in this part right here, but it will be fine for the rest of it. I just wanted to have a nice clean edge and because I'm gonna have to cut some of this, I'll show you what I'm gonna do to fix it. So I'm trying to make a cone shape out of this and it was a bit of a struggle. I should have folded the one little piece over the one edge so I would have a crease and it would have been much easier to work with. But I'm just going to do my best and hot glue both of these edges together and make sure they're secure. It's going to take a little bit of time because the hot glue was a little too hot and it just really didn't hold very well. So I had to hold it down quite a long time until it was set. I know it's a little early in the video, but if you don't mind, I'd love it if you could hit that like button, especially if you do like my video. I'm a little off camera here. I do apologize for that, but this is where I decided to cut the cone so it would be more straight all along the top. I was a little long in my template, so I'm just going to even it out. Now that I've got some raw edges all the way along the top again, I'm just going to cut out another couple of pieces of the linen fabric. I'm going to glue them on the inside and then fold them over to kind of create a little hem hanging over the top of the cone. Because the cone is round and my fabric is a straight line, I did have to kind of gather it just a little bit and kind of turn it and make sure that it was following the edge of the cone. Once I'm done with this portion, I will glue the other side down and this will create a pretty little hem. Then I'm gonna have to add another piece for the back part of the cone. So I decided that I wanted to add a stencil to the front side of the cone and if I would have been a little smarter or thinking outside the box or ahead of myself I would have done this on the fabric while it was still flat. So I would recommend doing that first because this was a little tricky. I had to hang on to the stencil and try not to squish the cone at the same time while I added the paint to it. I'm just going to be using some black multi-surface paint that is from folk art so it's good for any type of material but I like to use this when I'm doing fabric. I'm going to start filling the cone with pieces of pool noodle. Thank goodness it's summertime up here in Canada because we finally got some pool noodles at our dollar stores. They're so much better to use and so much more inexpensive to use than the floral foam. I'm just going to cut down all sorts of bits and pieces and then glue them into the cone, making sure that it's nice and sturdy and it's not gonna be too squishy. I'm going to be adding a whole bunch of different, I'm going to start by adding some Spanish moss. This is from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to pull it apart and arrange it so it covers all of the green. I'm not gonna bother hot gluing it down or pinning it in because as I put my florals in, that's gonna keep it in place. For this arrangement, I'm using some lavender that I gave a light dusting of white spray paint to because they were a little dark in color. I'm using some of these beautiful Sola Wood flowers and if you're interested in trying those out, I do have a link for them down in my description box. And I'm also going to be using a little bit of lamb's ear. So with the Sola Wood flowers, I added some bamboo skewers and I just push those into the bottom of the florals just very carefully. Some are a little shorter than others because I wanted some to be at the bottom and then some to be standing up towards the back. I'm using the lavender as my filler florals and I'm just going to keep adding it in until I like the look of it. I want there to be quite a bit of lavender in between all of the solo wood flowers. I added the lamb's ear around the perimeter of the cone just so you could see it a little bit, drooping a couple of them down and adding a few little mini solo wood flowers. And I think this turned out.
Today's video is in collaboration with my new YouTube friend Amy from Create with Amy 507. Amy has a real talent for farmhouse decor and these are just some of the items that you'll see when you visit her channel. My favorite is this beautiful mailbox with that sweet little mouse. How adorable. I would really appreciate if you could give Amy the same support you've shown me. Go over to her channel, click on her video, hit that red subscribe button, hit the like button and the notification bell and help her channel grow. My second project is using these thrifted plates. They were actually from Pottery Barn and I got them for $6, six for $6, so a dollar each. I'm gonna give them a quite a few coats of some white chalk paint because it took a little bit to cover that and to get a nice smooth surface. But just the top, I'm gonna to leave the sides and the bottom as is. To make a bit of a frame and make sure that the white really pops, I'm just taking some of that black multi-surface paint and a flat paintbrush, and I'm gonna go all the way around the edge of these plates. I want them to have sort of a framed out look, and I thought the black would be perfect because the wood underneath is a really super dark brown. It almost looks black too. If you've been watching my channel and following me for a while, you know that one of my favorite ways to transfer images is using tissue paper. It is so inexpensive. You can get a pack of at least 20 or 25 sheets of tissue paper from the dollar store, whether it's Dollarama, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, wherever. It's going to be really inexpensive. You just take that tissue paper and you tape it onto a regular piece of photocopy paper paper and put it through your printer. Now I use a laser jet printer and it works really well. I have had some people comment that the tissue paper gets eaten up. I would just recommend taping all the way around the tissue paper. Don't leave anything out and make sure that your tissue paper is a little bit smaller than the copy paper itself. If you're looking for a full tutorial on how to print on tissue paper, I've got that in my description box too, along with the link to my website where I'll have all of these free printables available for you. I always use Mod Podge when I'm working with tissue paper, unless I'm working with a full sheet, then I usually use a glue stick. But you put a small amount of Mod Podge on your project and then lay the tissue paper on top and then making sure your brush is always damp with Mod Podge, go ahead and just go all over the top of it. I'm going to do the same with the label that I created at the bottom. I decided to do a little bit of distressing, so I'm taking that same little chip brush, doing a dry brushing technique, and I'm just kind of going around the rim of the plate for now, and then I'm going to go over the outside edges. I'm not going to go over the lemon because sometimes when your paintbrush hits the tissue paper you get that outline showing up and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go very lightly and give it a distressed look. I've never been a big bow person but ever since I figured out how to do the double loop two finger bow I've been doing it more often because they always turn out perfect. I've already made two in the black and white buffalo check or the gingham style. I've got a black with some white stitching and now I'm going to do this little stripe here. Now that I have all my bows, I'm going to be adding a little bit of hot glue to the top two edges of the circle, and then I'm going to be gluing the actual loops right on top of the plate. And that will just hold it in place, and it'll make it look like the plate or the plaque itself is all the way around. For a final touch, I'm going to add one little baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to put that blossom right in the center of the bow and then I'm going to add just a little piece of greenery and these are all set to go. I really love how they turned out.
If this is the first time you're visiting my channel or you're coming over from Amy's channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and I'm so happy that you decided to take some time out of your day to spend it with me. If you haven't already subscribed and you like what you see, I would really appreciate if you could hit that red button too. Last year before Christmas, I had bought a couple of these rugs, one in black, which is this one, and one in gray. They're about $3.50 at my Dollarama store because they're about twice the size of the ones you can get at the Dollar Tree. I didn't end up doing anything with them, so I had a great idea to make a cute little welcome mat for my front door. I went to my Cricut and I cut out the word welcome on some vinyl, and I'm just going to stick it down here and have a really tough time peeling off the transfer tape and I'm not going to take you through that struggle but I finally got it to stick. I'm using some of the white multi-surface paint and I'm just using a stencil brush and I'm pouncing up and down and making sure that I don't have any bleeding underneath my vinyl. It actually worked out really well. I tried using some chalk paint that really didn't cover very well so I ended up going with the multi-surface paint and that seemed to do the trick. I did end up doing two coats though before I was finished. With the two coats, I didn't think it was going to be dark enough, but look at that. It turned out really well, and I'm really pleased with this multi-surface paint on the black. I do have to weed out a couple of areas, but then I'm going to be good to go. Also using my Cricut and some of this plastic poster board, I cut out a square template because I wanted this to kind of have the look of a buffalo check border, but it's not going to be 100% buffalo check. So basically white squares and black squares. And again, I'm just using my stencil and that multi-surface paint, and I'm just going to pounce to my heart's content until I get the border done all the way around. Using the same plastic poster board and my Cricut, I cut out another stencil. This is a couple of lemons with a few leaves. And I'm going to do the leaves in the green. And of course, the lemons are going to be yellow. I've already got a couple that are stenciled on there. They didn't come out as solid as the others, but I'm okay with that. I think it looks kind of nice when it's not 100% solid. It gives it a little bit more texture and a little bit more dimension. Once I had my lemons done, I just took one of my oil-based paint pens and just drew a rough line connecting all of the white squares. It didn't have to be perfect and I like it when it's not perfect because that's the rustic in me and it was really easy to do. So it looks really good with that extra line as the border. Now it's time to do some freehanding. I'm using a stencil brush, but it's not a round one it's more of a straight one or a flat one maybe and what I'm doing is just creating some lavender stems and this is so easy to do you just kind of put these little oval shapes and make them a little bit bigger as you're going down or you can leave them all looking the same it really isn't rocket science to do something like this what I would suggest is if you want to do something like this practice on a little bit of paper first until you get the hang of it and then head on over to your rug and get creative. Using the same green paint that I used for the lemon leaves, I'm going to add some stems and a few little leaves to my lavender sprigs. And I am so pleased with how my rug turned out. This is going to be sitting on my front porch for the summer. I think it's perfect. Let's get crafting. I'm going to start off by spray painting this old coffee can that I keep. These are awesome to keep if you need different planters. I'm going to give it a good coat of flat black Rust-Oleum two times paint and primer in one. Now I've got a stick from my yard. I actually kept this from a tree we cut down last year, so it's really hard and dried out. But I am just going to trim off this little branch because I don't need it. 
This is going to be my lemon tree. So I'm taking some acrylic paint and this is just from Apple Barrel. It's just regular yellow, what it's called. And I'm going to add some of the talc that I use to make my DIY chalk paint. I'm gonna just add a whole bunch in. You can see how watery this paint is. It doesn't cover really well, but once you add the talc, I like to set the paint aside so it has a chance to really thicken up. The baby powder or the talc, really absorbs some of the moisture so it gets super thick when you do it this way and that's what I really love about using talc just with acrylic paint. I don't have lemons that are small enough so I'm going to be using these limes. I grabbed these I think a couple of years ago at the thrift store and I think there was about 20 of them in a bag. They're styrofoam but they're coated with something really hard and they've got a beautiful texture just like limes and lemons. So I'm going to give these two coats of this yellow chalk paint. With my cordless drill, I'm going to use a drill bit that is the same width as these stems. These are ficus branches, but I'm going to use them for my lemon tree because they're very similar to lemon leaves. What I'm going to do with the drill is just drill random holes all the way up and down the stick on either side, just kind of staggering the holes because I'm gonna be able to then take those stems and stick them into the holes, making it look really realistic. When I get to applying these, I am going to add some hot glue into it so it stays nice and firm. As I said earlier, using some hot glue, I'll just put a little blob right on top of the hole and then insert the branch. I just continued to add the branches until I got the look I wanted. Now for the lemons. Don't they look amazing? I'm so excited that this color turned out so good. And with the texture of the lemons, it's amazing. I'm just taking some extra stems that I had from different florals and pushing those right into the spot where I had the skewer for when I painted the lemons. And this is going to give me the ability to just poke them right into the stem of the branch as well in a drilled hole the same as the other branches. Before I put them onto the tree, I'm gonna add a couple of leaves here and there. Some of the lemons will get two leaves. A couple of them will just get one. And I'm just using hot glue to glue them right to the bottom of the lemon. So now I'm just going to drill in some more holes and add my lemons. Now that the lemon tree itself is all finished, I got to figure out how I'm going to get that thing to stand up in my can. So I did have this piece of styrofoam and I'm just using my craft knife to cut out a circle that's about the same size as the branch. I'm going to glue that styrofoam down to the bottom of the can and then glue the branch in. To add some weight, I went to my stash and just threw in some rocks and some pebbles, whatever I happen to have laying around. Here you can see I've already started pushing in some of that st green styrofoam and it really worked well to just wedge everything in place. To finish off, I decided to add what moss I have left. This is sort of a mix of reindeer moss and Spanish moss. I'm just going to use some hot glue and then press it into place. I liked the black of the coffee can, but I just thought it was missing a little something. So I just took my dry brush and did some strokes all the way around it. I think that just gave it more of a weathered and rustic look. And that's something that I like. You could definitely leave it black if you prefer it that way. I just like... I'm doing some trash to treasures and I'm starting off with this angel food or bunt cake pan with a really cool removable interior. I've never seen that before, but it's really old. I had it at my cottage. I think it was a garage sale find years ago. I don't make angel food cake. So I thought I would repurpose this into something beautiful for home decor, but I do need a bottom for it because I'm going to be using the bottom as the pedestal. So I'm just taking a piece of this MDF board that I picked up at my Dollarama store. 
I like to remove things in sections so I have decent pieces to use again. And now I'm just going to score off the corners and that will make it much easier to get my circle shape. I'm going to give one side of it a coat of home decor chalk paint in the color Parisian Gray. And this is the color that closely matches the tin color of the pan. I'm going to use a combination of hot glue and my weld bond glue, which is good for metal, ceramic, wood, glass, tile, anything. But this didn't turn out the way I thought. The hot glue didn't stick at all. So I ended up having to remove the hot glue from the backing and then just use my weld bond glue. I put a paint can on the inside of it just to hold it in place until it had a good chance to stick well, which was about a half an hour. Once that was good and dry, I'm now going to use my weld bond glue and make sure that I get a good amount on there, glue it upside down onto the bottom of the cake pan, and this will become my riser stand or the pedestal for this cake pan. Now again, you see me using hot glue, but I actually didn't do the hot glue for this either. I did try it and everything fell apart, as you can see here. So I had to just redo it just using weld bond glue. Look at how this turned out. I think it's absolutely gorgeous just the way it is. I'm not going to touch it with paint at all, but I am going to put on a couple of tissue paper printables to give it a little bit of a label and more of a vintage look. So I'm using my Mod Podge and I'm going to go ahead and put the tissue paper on top and do my whole thing. You're going to start from the inside and work your way out. For this piece, I took a baby wipe and made sure that I cleaned up any of the excess Mod Podge on the exterior because it does change the color and the shine of this piece. So just make sure you've always got a baby wipe on hand. They're so handy to have. I love how this turned out and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I hope you like how it turned out too. My second project is using this little bushel basket that was a thrift store find a while ago. I'm just drilling some holes into it so I can push these steel bars right into it. I'm making a plant stand. So guess where these metal posts came from? Yep, they're the sticks from the toilet brushes and they are the perfect addition to this to make a beautiful little plant stand. I did have to work a little bit hard to get that in there, but it was worth it in the long run. Of course, I'm definitely not leaving these just the chrome color. I wanted to use my black hammered metal finish spray paint. I had run out of that, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and use the silver instead. And it turned out just as nice. I wanted to create a handle for this little basket so I'm taking some of this wire that I think I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut three or four equal lengths of it using my snips. Using my needle nose pliers I'm just going to bend a hook shape into each of the ends and then I'm going to take one of the pieces of wire and wrap it around to hold everything in place. Using a thin drill bit, I'm going to drill a hole on either side of the basket so I have somewhere to hook the handle. Then I used another little loop of wire and created a sort of hook and loop kind of thing and just threaded it on and then twisted it around and looped it through again until it was secure. To assemble the legs, I took these posts and I pushed them through the holes that I had made with my drill earlier. Then I added some hot glue all the way around just to hold it secure while I was working on it. I decided that I needed something to hold the leg a little bit more securely. The hot glue alone wasn't doing it. So I'm taking some of this white nautical rope. This is not from the Dollar Tree. It's from a local craft store. And I really like it because it's 
the cotton rope like you can get at the Dollar Tree, but it's a lot thinner. So it just really worked well for this project. I'm also using my little silicone makeup applicator to make sure that I don't burn my fingers because I'm using a lot of hot glue for this. I'm going to wrap the nautical rope around five times and then cut it and glue it to the back. And this just made the legs that much more sturdy. I did add some additional hot glue to the inside just to make sure that they wouldn't wiggle around. I'm going to add a little grippy handle onto the wire handle. Sometimes you see that like in old fashioned things, they're a little wood handle. I didn't have anything like that that would work for this. So I decided to use some of this nautical rope. And to make it thicker, I'm gluing a piece down first, and then I'm going to take another piece and wrap it around on top of this. It's just going to make the handle look much thicker. The inside of this basket didn't look very pretty, so I decided to add some faux lavender into it. I'm just putting some hot glue on those legs and I'm gluing in half of a large styrofoam ball. And that works really great if you don't wanna have to fill everything with the floral foam, that can get a little pricey. I added some preserved moss, some lavender flowers in different shapes and sizes, and I think this little basket turned out really cute. The second project I have for you today is also a bread box, but it's huge. I'll show you that in a few minutes. I'm just taking these table legs that were given to me by a friend. The top of the table was in really bad shape, so she didn't even give me the top. She just gave me these legs. They're a really red mahogany color, and I don't like that, and they're very shiny. So I decided to take my sanding sponge and go over them really well with the sandpaper just to get rid of the shine and also take off some of that red stain. I'm going to give the table legs one good coat of Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one in flat black. And I thought that would just be a really nice accent against the white of the bread box. I know I said earlier that I don't normally plan things out, but in this case, it's a little different. These legs have a really peculiar shape and I did want to make sure that I had them all facing the right direction. So I'm just taking a pencil and tracing out where I want them to be. Now I am still eyeballing the position of them, but the pencil line will help me to drill right in the center. I'm also doing the same thing here. I'm using a drill bit that is a little bit larger than the size of the screw, so I can easily just push it through from the inside of the bread box. Here you can see that I've pushed the screw through. I'm holding it again on the inside with a screwdriver, and then I'm just going to screw the table leg all the way on until it is really snug and secure. Here's what this monster of a bread box looks like. It's almost two feet wide. So I'm not even sure it was a bread box, but it did have a lid. I chose to take the lid off for this project. And now I'm just going to go around the edges with my sandpaper, sand it off and make it look nice and distressed. This was something that was part of my mammoth painting spree that I did a couple of months ago in my garage where I took all of my wood pieces, I painted them black with spray paint first, then I did a coat of clear coat on top to prevent any stains from coming through, and then I did a couple of coats of just regular latex white paint. I'm back inside again and for this project I decided to create a tissue paper printable. If you're interested in learning how to do tissue paper printables, I will have a link down in my description box. I'm just applying a thin coat of Mod Podge where I want my first transfer to go. And I've cut it out really close to the design and I'm gonna center it as best I can because once I get it down, I'm not gonna be able to peel it up again. Always make sure that you have some Mod Podge on your brush. If your brush is too dry, you'll end up tearing the tissue paper. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you like farmhouse decor, thrift flips, 
dollar store DIYs and some wood decor, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free and it really helps my channel grow. This is the actual free printable. As I said earlier, I did print out two of them and I cut apart some of the herbs so I could add them onto the box. Because it's such a large surface, I thought it would look much better with the addition of a few herbs on either side. Here I'm just adding a little bit more Mod Podge to cover the front of the box completely. I will be sealing it with a spray sealer, but sometimes the Mod Podge is a little bit of a different finish. Even though they're both matte, they're two different products, so I like to just make things look cohesive. This box looks absolutely amazing on my front porch. I am in love. For this last project, I'm going to show you how to make lemons. So what I'm doing is I've cut one of the styrofoam balls into four, so I've got a nice little wedge. Then I'm taking a wide piece of masking tape and I'm just going to be taping it across the bumpy edge. So if you wanted, you could leave that bumpy. I just thought lemons don't usually have that kind of texture. So I thought putting the masking tape on would help me get the right kind of texture. I've got some yellow paint mixed with baking soda and I'm going to go ahead and give this a really nice thick coat. I'm using a bamboo skewer just to make sure that I have a handle on it and you can see how pretty this color is. It was just regular apple barrel yellow paint. I did add a little bit of white and then the baking soda just to give it more of a dimpled or rough texture. I also wanted to make a couple of half lemons. So I like to use a bread knife when I'm cutting these styrofoam balls apart because it's a nice long blade, it's really sharp, and I get a really nice clean cut. I'll be putting two pieces of masking tape on this one, and then I'm going to take some small scissors and just trim the tape all around the edge. So here's the trash part of this DIY. This is a wreath that I made a couple of years ago. I had some eggs on it, which I've already removed and used on a different project. Now I'm just going to pull off all of these stems and these little white blossoms that are very pretty. I think they're apple or peach blossoms, but they actually look very similar to a lemon blossom. I'm also going to be removing that chicken wire because my look for this wreath didn't really look like it needed chicken wire. So I'm going to just remove everything and then have the base wreath ready to go. I love these wreaths that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They're so nice and sturdy and for a dollar you can't beat it. But the color is not so great. I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in cocoa bean and a rough brush and just get into as many nooks and crannies as I can but it's going to have more of a dry brushed look and that's okay. These large stems come from Dollarama. They're $1.25 and they're called ficus branches and they're very similar to what a lemon leaf looks like. So I thought these would be perfect to start sticking inside of the wreath. I'm going to be going in one direction all the way around and I'm just going to bend them as I see fit and fill it in as much as I want. I'm going to use a white chalk marker to add some details to the lemons. When you're using markers like this that have liquid paint or chalk on the inside of them, it's always best to just use a really light touch because that allows the paint to flow out nicely. For the half lemon, I wanted it to look like a lemon again. So if you're not sure how that looks, you can go ahead and look something up on the internet. I just decided to do a circle all the way around and then sort of draw some flower petals because that's sort of what the inside of a lemon looks like. And I think it turned out pretty cute. 
I'm going to keep the bamboo skewers on the lemons because it's going to make it so much easier for me to insert it into the wreath form. So I'm just going to place these in such a way that is pleasing and how I like it. And then I'll just use some hot glue to make sure they're secure. I decided to reuse those little white blossom flowers. They really did look like little lemon blossoms. So I'm just going to tuck them in between the leaves and the lemons, just using some hot glue. I loved how this wreath was turning out, but I thought I would use some of these little pit berries to add little accents around the greenery of the wreath. So I'm gonna just use some hot glue. I'll probably cut the majority of them in half and then just place them all the way around the wreath just to give it a little bit of an extra pop. I added a couple of shoestring bows with some buffalo check ribbon and here's the finished look. I hope you enjoyed these projects and got some inspiration to start doing some summer decorating yourself. My next video will be the start of my summer makeover in my backyard. I hope you'll stay tuned for that. For now, here's a couple more you might like. Bye!